Hi, and welcome to Virtual Eats Guru, where barbecue and grilling is made tasty. My name is Brandon Tanner, and today we're doing a corned beef for you. With St. Patrick's Day being close by, we actually were going to our local Costco, and they had these pre-done uh, corned beef. Uh, they're actually beef round, not brisket, but that should work out fine. And it's already brined, and then it's got the seasoning in it, so we're going to give that a shot. And, you know, if you like this type of content, please like, comment, and subscribe. You guys support has been awesome. So as you guys know, you know, I do a lot of things the traditional way and then sometimes we make it our own and do our own thing. So I recommend you do that exact same thing. Make it the way that you want to do it. These are just some ideas and some ways that we go about it. In this particular case, uh, you know, my grandfather was Bohemian, uh, Czech Republic, if you will now. And so basically I grew up on sauerkraut, duck and dumpling. So, you know, there's always a variation of hints of those types of things from the childhood that go into whatever I make. So in this particular case, we're going to smoke this uh, corned beef for two hours and then uh, at 225, and I'm going to use hickory pellets. I want a kind of a hearty, heavy smoke flavor to it because the second stage of this, we're going to braise it. So after that first two hours, we're going to uh, turn the temp up to 300 degrees and then uh, we're going to put the corned beef in this pan and then we're going to bring the water level up to about three quarters of the way um, and then we're going to seal it tightly. Um, at that point I'm also going to put a probe, temp probe into the thick part of the meat. Uh, we're going to get it to about 175 internal temperature and then I'm going to throw in the potatoes, carrots and assorted pearl onions. And so these are just some other ingredients. You can use whichever types of potatoes, carrots, vegetables that you like. Um, I like these uh, you know, yellow yellow potatoes and the ruby golds and then you know obviously traditionally you'd have corned beef and cabbage and that kind of stuff and there's plenty of recipes for cabbage and however you want to do that my cabbage is sauerkraut <laughs> back to the bohemian background and then I actually like to make Rubens out of it I know it's not pastrami but it's very similar in taste and texture depending on how you do it um, so that's how that's how we'll do it that's how we'll eat it but it's good just it'll be good just by itself the regular way um, but that's one of the ways that we like to do it. So with that, I'll get the Traeger going and get this out of the packaging, get it seasoned up, get it all set up, and then we'll get going. I'll show you as much pictures uh, outside as I can. We got a pretty good snowstorm today, so we'll see how much I can get of footage outside. Okay, so we got two hours of smoke on this bad boy at 225. Looks great, turned out really good. Um, so I'm gonna move it into this disposable pan and I'm just gonna fill up the water up to about three quarters of the way because we're gonna braise this. So we'll put foil over it, really get it uh, down nice and tight on there so there's no leakage. And then, uh, as you've seen in some of my previous videos, um, you know, I use the ThermalWorks gear and specifically the ThermalWorks smoke and ThermalWorks smoke gateway. They're really good, and so, you know, I'll try to provide some of that, but, you know, I'm going to put the probe, the meat probe in now, because we're going to shoot for basically, you know, 175, pull it, then, we'll add, you know, if we need to add more water, we can, and, you know, potatoes, carrots, uh, different types of onions, and then, of course, it's on my phone, so I can see what's going on, I get alarms and alerts and that kind of stuff, and so, huge proponent of ThermalWorks, and I'll, I'll put some links to some of the other videos that I go into more detail, as well as the products, if you're interested, so... Anyways, with that, I'll throw this in here and get to putting in the water, seal it up, and then, you know, get rolling. Alright, so it got up to just past 175 at 177 and that was about an hour and 45 minutes. So anywhere between an hour 
and a half to hour and 45 minutes, maybe two, but at 300 degrees, I don't think so. It was running really good. Um, I had a couple of radiators here and there, but I think some of the steam was getting on the temp probe that I had sitting out there, so it was kind of funny to see that, the difference between it and the Traeger, but it was totally perfect. So now I'm going to uh, remove this top uh, for now, and then I'm going to put in the tomato, the potatoes and the onions and the carrots, and then reseal it. And at this point, um, I'll put in some, if I need some more liquid, I'll put in chicken stock versus just water. You could do just water, but at this point I'll probably put in chicken stock if I need to. I may not need to, but um, you know we'll see how it goes. All right, so our corned beef came out spectacular. Our vegetables are nice and tender and flavorful. You can smell this thing, smells great. Um, it ended up being a total from start to finish as far as cooking time went. It was about a five and a half hour uh, deal. And um, I actually, after after I uh, braised it for you know a couple hours and I put the uh, potatoes and carrots and stuff in, I had it you know set to 300. And after the first 45 minutes, it was kind of sticking around 170, 172, 174, not moving much. So I jacked it up to about 350 for the remainder of the time. So if I was to do it in hindsight, I'd probably, once I smoked it, it's, you know, once I smoked it at, at 225 or whatever you do there, when I was braising it, I probably would do it uh, 325 to 350 to shorten down that window. Um, you don't have to, because obviously, you know, the, the longer it takes, technically, typically the better it is. Um, but this, you know, this is five and a half hours. You could probably get it done in, you know, four, four and a half hours if you wanted if you turned up a little bit of the heat. But this thing will be great. I mean, like I said, everything just smells delicious, looks delicious. I mean, it feels just right. This thing is very tender and moist. Um, now that I've taken it off and out of the, the, the fluids, I'm going to let it rest for 15 minutes and then we're going to start shaving off slices. And the grain's running like this. And so if you want, the more tender you do, you know, you want to basically cut against uh, that grain for the real tender cuts. And so we'll slice it up that way and we're going to do some sandwiches. But, uh, you know, looking forward to this. We'll do a quick taste test, but hope you enjoyed this. If you like this type of content, please like, comment, and subscribe.